What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today I am joined with the Marsman crew to have the official Marsman Game of the Year awards, which we are kind of coinciding with the official game awards happening on December 7th. But we're going to have our own version to kind of go over some of the categories, but also even add our own categories. So let's jump right into it. The fact is we had this last year. I thought it was a really fun time to kind of give our own our own kind of picks for the game awards, as well as kind of add in some new things to kind of make fun of some stuff as or things that we wish that the game awards did cover. I feel like that was the really the, the key thing. If you guys need categories, let us know. We have a bunch of good ones and we added some other ones that even, you know, spice up the pot a little bit. So let's start off with the first award, and that's going to be the best game direction. And basically, this is an award for outstanding creative vision and innovation and in design. And obviously, the game nominations are Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Wonder, and Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And I will go with Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, will be my pick for this. I feel like it honestly has a massive open world with a lot of great mechanics that have uh, really changed up a lot of how open world games are played. They even made adjustments to their last game, so it's not just the same old, same old. Some change-ups, some, some great things to play, so that's my pick. Hockey, what's yours? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. Legends of Zelda. Um, let's creative vision, design, the abilities that they added to the game kind of opened up a new way to play it as well, so I really think this game's going to take that uh, award. Angelica, what's your pick? Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to say Baldur's Gate 3, and they had tremendous creative vision, but innovation is the big thing that that stands out for me. I'm picking Legend of Zelda as well. The added mechanics to Legend of Zelda and the stuff that we have seen people build, including ourselves, to get through levels and to get through aspects of the game, I think Legend of Zelda is my pick, and I think it deserves to win. All right, and let's jump to the next one. Best multiplayer game. So this is best multiplayer in gameplay design, including co-op with massively fun multiplayer experiences and with the nominees being Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Super Mario Wonder, Party Animals, and Street Fighter 6. This one actually has one of the, one of the best collection of multiplayer games out there in the past few years, to be honest with you. I mean, I mean, like when you think about the last few years, they've been kind of trash, but this one's been pretty good. And I'm going to go with Super Mario Wonder. I think this is a four player co-op game has a lot of great levels, a lot of fun experiences you can have with, a, with up to four people. Uh, and I think comparing to all the others, Baldur's Gate feels like you need to really be into D&D &D to really enjoy it with somebody else. Diablo 4, I feel like, is a fun time with other people. Uh, but I feel like there are some real grinding you need to do to really progress. Party Animals, I never really got to experience it, but I feel like I heard a lot of great things about it. But uh, it's a little too goofy for me. I feel like there's like, I want to have a little more stability in Street Fighter 6 is fun, but we only to play up to two people. So Super Mario Wonder for me is the go-to pick. Great worlds, great fun, and I'm going with it. So Angelica, what's your pick here? You know, that you make a very good point on uh, Super Mario Wonder. Um, Party Animals, I feel like, is probably going to win. But uh, my, my pick is Street Fighter VI. I think they actually, um, Street Fighter VI, and we're not covering this one, I think it deserves to be also the best fighting game of the year as well. Um, I think they did a really good job of kind of uh, making it more accessible to you know the non-super in-depth fighting fans um, into this game. They did a really good job with accessibility too for those that need it um, with this game. So to me, I think Street Fighter 6 did a really good job of kind of making a more modernized version of a fighting game, even though I agree with you, these participants are pretty good this year. Yeah, and uh, Haki, what's your pick? Yeah, this might shock you. I'm going to go with Diablo 4. This is uh, from someone that does not play uh, top-down games like this. Um, the only reason why I even got into it was because I was able to play with the Marsman crew. Uh, but this was a very fun game. Just like Marsman said, for me, it's going to be fun because I can play with other people that, that I know. Joining up uh, you know, by myself and playing with randoms, probably not going to be that fun for me. But the skill tree and the ability to kind of run through the game um, you know, with different builds, I thought was very unique and, and just a fun experience in general. Yeah, and so with that, we're going to jump to our next award, which is the Best Adaptation. And we've had multiple different uh videos about game adaptation so we've kind of become uh i guess the experts in, in game adaptations and critiques over them and so this year's is nearly matching last year's adaptation yeah. list with which is a a great site for me making these videos of trashing on adaptations but now 
starting to actually get good ones. It's almost like they watched my video and they start realizing that what they need to do and, you know, it only makes sense. But the nominees this year are Castlevania Nocturne, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us, Super Mario Movie, and Twisted Metal. And all of them actually had some pretty good ratings. I think of the four, Gran Turismo probably had the lowest of the four, but still like close to a nine, I think. Um, in my opinion, I'm going to go with the Super Mario Movie mainly because I felt like it had broken records on the box office for being one of the best really animated movie in history. I mean, it's it's on par with levels of like Frozen, which is like a juggernaut. And because of this, I think it's already been confirmed that they're already starting to plan out even more Nintendo based movies. And it finally it finally feels good knowing that Nintendo is breaking out of their shell literally and to marry movie kind of hit on most of almost all aspects of what you would want a marry movie to be except for it to be a little longer and maybe have uh, chris pratt have a little bit of italian accent but everything else story characters everything was pretty good so i'm gonna go with Super Mario, uh, the Super Mario bros movie here uh, as my pick but hockey what's your pick yeah so i'm kind of split with this one um it's kind of hard to decide between like a live action uh and an animated movie for me they both uh, were really, really good. I didn't play The Last of Us, but I loved the TV show, and it almost made me want to go and, and play the video game. But the Super Mario movie, like you said, was kind of uh, breaking records all over the place. I'm probably going to go. Who I think is going to win is I think The Last of Us is going to win. Now, the only other thing that I want to say is no shot Gran Turismo wins at all, but I'm happy it got nominated because it was actually a very interesting movie, and... It was based on a true story of a kid that was just a simulation driver, you know, driving sim cars, making it to, uh, you know, driving a Nissan GTR in real life. So that was a cool, uh, true story. And it was actually a pretty cool movie. I went to go see it by myself and there wasn't really anyone else in the movie theater as well. <laughs> nice. There you go. Uh, Angelica, what's your pick here? I tell you, this is a pretty good group right here so it's always good to see good adaptations and it, it could be even going into 2024 so we'll be uh talking about that i'm sure but castlevania is another one um, that i don't think enough people watch that they actually did a really good job but i agree with you guys i think it's a two-man race it's the last of us in the super mario movie um both have crushed records and super mario movie uh in the box office um is, is up there with frozen which is really really hard to do but you know when you read it off recognizing outstanding outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game i think one of them had a little bit harder to do than the other and that was the last of us so i'm going to give it to the last of us but i think it's going to be very close and either one of them win i think you know I, I think it'd be a fair winner um if it's any of the other ones i think it'd be a little bit off but um i think a good crop of uh, adaptations yeah, and I, I honestly think the last was probably going to win. I think my pick, though, would be Super Mario Bros. Move, but, I mean, both of them are very good. Um, I feel like they, this whole list was pretty damn good compared to what we've seen in previous years. Uh, I'm surprised uh, Halo Show is not going to be on here. I mean, I know... 24! Uh, what are you talking year, about? Next year, <laughs> next year, it'll be coming out next year, so, I mean, it's going to definitely win that one. Um, next, award, next award we're going to give out is the Best Action Adventure, which is basically Best Action Adventure that is combining combat with traversal and, and pu puzzle solving. Uh, and the nominees here are Alan Wake 2, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And this was also a pretty tough list because when you think about like the traversal, I feel like uh, Spider-Man had probably one of the best feelings of Spider-Man flying through the city with multiple different ways of traversing. And uh, it feels great to move around. Uh, and the combat's pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. There's some combos, attacks that you can do. Uh, and I feel like even Star Wars did a good job with the way in which the map is organized and playing. But there's one that stands above the rest. And that's the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, because I feel like the that added puzzle solving is really what gets you with this, because I feel like they they really hit on everything you want from like dungeons and having the part problem solving with that, with the way traversal, with map design. I feel like they kind of hit on all marks with every little detail mattering with like your survival mechanics and everything else along those lines. So the Legend of Zelda game, you know, Tears of the Kingdom is, is top tier when it comes to that stuff. So I'm, that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, but Angelica Hill, what game are you picking here? Yeah, and I was going to say, you, you made a very good point. This is best action adventure combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving, right? So Alan Wake 2 did a really fine job on the puzzle solving. Spider-Man 2 did a really good job on the, on the combat and adventure style. 
Um, and then we talk about Resident Evil 4 remake, which they did a very fine job on, on the remake itself. Star Wars Jedi could have been an underdog in this, but the performance at launch was really poor, and I think it hurts that game. And with all that said, I have to go with Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as well. I think, again, you know, Legend of Zelda it happened earlier in the year, so it feels like it's so far away from when it came out. But the game was really good, and I think people forget about that as more games come out as the year goes along. And I think Legend of Zelda, combining all the aspects of what you said, should win, and I think they do. Yeah, and uh, Hockey, what's your pick here? Yeah, I'm agreeing with you guys. Uh, I got Tears of the Kingdom. I think uh, from Breath of the Wild, all they did was improve it. Um, and if you're going to add all three of those, the combat, the traversal, and the puzzle solving, puzzle solving, just like you guys said, um, Tears of the Kingdom kind of comes out uh, ahead of uh, everyone in this category for me. And let's jump now to our next category. And this one's similar. One. Yeah, uh, best one. action, which is basically the best game for action genre, focused primarily on combat. Now, I think this one was really tough for me personally because I feel like there are two games in my in this list that really stand out the most to me. As much as I like Dead Island 2, it was funny doing some of the mechanics, but it was kind of like a slow paced dance. Like you're just slowly going methodically through it. Uh, Remnant 2 had some pretty fun experiences as well, but I feel like it kind of drops off the list. The two I'm looking at the most is Armor Core 6 and Hi-Fi Rush as being my two the top tier of this of this action and you know i feel like I, i'm really stuck here but i ended up picking hi-fi rush because it adds in not only the combat of the daily movements but also has platforming which i think is kind of that added little mechanic added in nothing against armored or armored core six it was mainly the only thing that's different for me i think for that one is it kind of turned too much into i'm just dodging fire dodging firing like if it was closer to a lot of the um and, you know a lot of the dark souls like it was closer to dark souls or even elden ring where you had to be a little bit more strategic and in, in the firing mechanics or which weapons you're going to be using more i feel like i know you're supposed to do that more often but a lot of times especially most of the game it's just can i get the most powerful gun and just blast this guy in front of me like that's that's literally what for me personally but like i said i, I think i'm gonna go with hi-fi rush here just because i felt like they had different combo attacks and you had different enemy types of enemies you had to kind of use specific move sets for just to break a, an armor and then attack them so i feel like it was a lot, a lot i mean a little bit of strategy built into how you combat so aki what's your pick here for the best action game yeah i uh i'm picking one of your top two it's gonna be armor core though uh i think this is what this game is all about is, is straight up combat um from everything from you know the small mechs that you're facing until you, you get to the boss and then once you actually get to the boss it's just crazy combat and each boss was different um you sprinkle a little bit of that from software difficulty on it um and it just becomes a game uh you know of its own so i'm gonna go armor core i thought the combat was uh, unbelievable well jellico what's your pick here yeah, to me, it's a three-man race. And Remnant 2, I don't think it's enough credit for its action components because um, I think it was a bit of a surprise for people. But my top two is Armored Core 6 and Hi-Fi Rush. And I think Hi-Fi Rush is actually a better overall game out of the entire group um, in this one. But if we're just focusing in on action, then I am going to go Armored Core 6 because I think that's its component is the action part. It's the high explosive. It's the dodging and shooting these different type of guns um, and the uh, extensive boss battles. But um, I think Hi-Fi Rush overall is a better game and the best game out of this group. But I am going to go, if we're just talking about the, the component of action, I think it's Armored Core 6. And now we move on to the next one, the best narrative. And this is the best for the best for the most outstanding story in storytelling and narrative development in a game. And this one's def very difficult. I mean, when you think about all the games on the list, Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, Cyberpunk, Phantom Liberty, and Final Fantasy 16. I mean, you can you can pick any of these and it would, it would be respected as a choice. I think me personally, I'm kind of narrowing it down between, I feel like the top two for me would be Baldur's Gate and Spider-Man 2 uh, between the, the story narrative and how they progress. And I think a lot of people would say that Spider-Man 2's narrative is is pretty solid for uh, for what it's doing. And at the same time, I'm also, I mean, I don't know if I can say this is a criticism, but you're using kind of source material that's been already made for a very long time. So it's kind of, I'm not going to rag on Insomniac safe. for doing that. It's called safe. Yeah, I know, it, it's, a, it's a safe it's a safe story, mainly because you kind of have, you have source material there just, just in the background. You're really just kind of making your own variation of it. 
But I'm going to go with Baldur's Gate 3 mainly because it basically turns into the story you make it. And I feel like that's yeah. kind of the reason why I think it has the best narrative because it incorporates a base story, but you kind of make decisions on how it goes from there. And that is a very unique thing that you don't really see, you know, as well done as Baldur's Gate, as Baldur's Gate 3 does. So I'm going to go with Baldur's Gate 3 for the best narrative game. But uh, Haki, what's your pick here? Uh, I'm going to go with Spider-Man 2. Uh, it's just them bringing in kind of both uh, Spider-Mans into this one game, uh, being able to switch, obviously, between them as well. Um, I think anything that, um, you know, has that name of Spider-Man as well as Star Wars, and we'll get to that. Um, as long as the game hits, plays good, um, and kind of sticks to the story, um, it's going to be very good. So I'm going to go with Spider-Man 2 here. Well, Angelica, what's your pick? Actually, the two-man race that I think it is is Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3. Um, Alan Wake 2 is heavily driven in its narrative, and it does a really good job of kind of traversing between, um, I don't want to spoil things if you haven't played it, between the main character's kind of alternate world and reality, um, and they do a pretty good job of that. But I agree. I'm going to go Baldur's Gate 3. I think they win this one, just like Mars Man said. The, the ability to traverse your own story and make your own story um, both in a single player and co-op setting is is pretty fantastic and all these NPCs also have their side stories so they really make a traversive world for you and and we're actually I'm pretty excited to for the game coming out on Xbox um, to, to try to you know get the group together and, and potentially play that um, so you know again Baldur's Gate 3 I think is um, probably wins a bunch of awards I think this one is one of their most deserving and I think it's best narrative that they win yeah, and let's jump now to the next one. This is also a pretty tough one. Actually, the yeah. next two are hard, but best art direction, and this is for outstanding creative or technical achievement in artistic design and animation. And I feel like for me, I, I struggled to really think of the best art direction of the top ones because they're all kind of like very good when in developing their worlds and how, how this world looks in the, in the game and how you play it. But my top two here would be Hi-Fi Rush and Super Mario Wonder based on how unique both of them kind of developed. Now, even Sumeria Wonder has always kind of been a similar Mario art style, but the way that the game, the, the levels progress and change, yeah. how you play definitely is unique. And even Hi-Fi Rush, the entire world moves with music. So it's kind of just like it's every animation, every combat objective is moving with the songs. Um, and I think that is what makes it unique. But for this one, I'm going to go with Super Mario Wonder. Um, I feel like the art design and the art direction that they were doing was just spot on. It made it feel like it was a new formula of Mario game. Even though we've seen hundreds of 2D Mario games before, this one just felt different because of the art style and the way that they were making these worlds just feel different overall. So I'm going to do some Mario Wonder here, but Langelica, what's your pick? Animation wise, Hi-Fi Rush and Super Mario Wonder were tremendous. Art design, I actually... I liked Lies of P. I thought Lies of P gave a really dark and gloomy vibe to it, like Bloodborne, and they did a fantastic job. But who I think is going to win is Alan Wake 2. I think this is probably one of the best-looking horror games that you're going to see that we've seen in the last decade or so. And I think a lot of people really love that part of Alan Wake 2, even if the gameplay, um, which I think is slightly overrated from you know <laughs> everything that has gone on, but where they really nail the part is the vibe and the art direction um of this and i think alan wake 2 deserves the win here Aki, what's your pick it's had a toss up between uh, hi-fi and mario but i'm gonna go with hi-fi rush because it was a very unique game uh you know fun art style and it kind of worked with the story that they were telling as well and it, kind of a cool story too um and the other thing too is a, a kind of a surprise drop which i know you had mentioned uh you know in other videos as well so kind of all those things combined uh is, is going to give me uh you know the uh, hi-fi rush for this one and moving on to similar with our talk about music and this is the best score in music for outstanding music inclusion of score original music and also licensed soundtracks and when you look at the nominees here alan way 2 Baldur's gate 3 final fantasy 16 and legend of zelda tears of kingdom was along with hi-fi rush i think this is a clear winner I think Hi-Fi Rush wins this because the entire game is built with music and it's built with not only music, the actual songs made by bands, it's like including all these classics, but they even make their own variations of these songs so that it doesn't like, there's no copyright. So you actually have to, play, you can play in non-copyright mode or play in copyright mode, it's like they call it streamer mode because they don't want anyone getting in trouble because these are all real songs, but the songs fit perfectly to the situations. They, and the world mate is moving with the songs 
and they just do a great job. The whole whole game is about music, so it's just like it's it literally fits perfectly here. I think I Fi Rush should have been here. The other only other one I think that would match is Final Fantasy 16 because I feel like their soundtracks for their battles are pretty damn good. I mean, Final Fantasy usually always has some some slapping tracks, especially with like uh, like Kingdom Hearts. They usually do a really good job with how their combat songs go. Uh, it was a lot of chorus and just just epicness going on. So. High Five Rush for me is going to win, in my opinion, just because I feel like they just incorporate music so well with their game. And it made you want to like literally just keep listening to the tracks and even have a whole soundtrack section if you want to just go listen to it. But uh, Hockey, what's your pick here for the best uh, score in music? Yeah, so again, toss up for me here. Um, Tears of the Kingdom, I thought, had a very good soundtrack. And, you know, the other Legend of Zelda game, Breath of the Wild as well, had a very, very good soundtrack. But as you said, I think Hi-Fi Rush is actually going to win this one. Um, the core of their game literally is based off of the music and the combat is based off the music as well. And as you said, you kind of have original music as well as music that they brought in from bands as well. So I think Hi-Fi Rush uh, is going to win this. And again, the surprise drop just makes it kind of even cooler for me as well. well Angelica, what's your pick here? There's an Hi-Fi Rush has five nominations in this Game Awards, the same amount of nominations as The Legend of Zelda. But I do I do think that this category is its best chance to win one. And I do think it's deserving of this one. I think Final Fantasy 16 has a very good soundtrack, like Marsman said, especially in the boss battles. But if you're talking about inclusion of the score, I think Hi-Fi Rush, this is the award that they should win. And I think it's a deserving win. And I think if they don't win, I think they get jobbed. Even though I do think Final Fantasy 16 has some good music, Legend of Zelda's got some good music, but Hi-Fi Rush, this is the category they absolutely deserve to win. They should win. And I think at the end of the day, I hope the critics are smart enough they give Hi-Fi Rush this one. I, I, I hope so too, because I feel like this is like, like you said before, this is their thing. This is I what think they- this is the one. This the other is ones are really like, tough. The categories yeah. they're in are really hard. I feel like I, I this be, one is- yeah, Hi-Fi Rush is like up here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like for me, like I didn't even think that there was really like a compare. Like the closest is Final Fantasy 16, but like, yep. but even then, I was like, Hyper Rush is like on its own tier because that's really yeah. what the game's like about. Yeah. Like it was music, and it just fit well. But let's talk about the big one today, and that's the game of the year. And this one is obviously a tough. 2023 was loaded with with top tier games. So we have Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Wonder, and Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom as our nominees and obviously this is a, a pretty competitive year for gaming and all these you can kind of give a lot of positives i mean we've already had a video uh this on the channel that talked about the actual announcements of the game awards and which ones we wanted to see jump in versus not but we're not talking about what we rather see it's about well of this list who would we pick and the me personally when i'm looking at all these games there's one i feel like might win because of the i guess the ability to kind of change things up and that's Baldur's Gate but me personally I want to win and I what I think will win is Legends of the Tears of the Kingdom because of the fact that you took a game of the year uh, really a formula that would work so well with survival mechanics with traversal with open world with all these things that built into the game to help you move across the world and even just combat and do puzzles and then you expanded upon it you made it where it's it's even more in depth more fun and the world just feels different even if it's based in the same area it felt completely new and i think that is really what makes this game so fun and the, the combat the way that you play it just hits all the things you want and they even proved upon things that a lot of fans were angry about from the first game which was the lack of dungeons and they said all right well we're gonna make so many more dungeons for you to do and so many more ways to combat with weapons and all that so this kind of hits every single mark that you want for a legend of zelda fan and What's crazy about this is that if we're talking about FPSs and you know level FPS levels and all that, this is a 30 FPS game built on an old gen console, and it should not even be in comparable. This is like this if you're thinking about tech, this is built on like indie tech, and it's it's literally to the level. It's on a straight up tablet, and it's straight up going to win this, in my opinion. I just feel like it's it honestly deserves it um, with how low tech this is, and it's still. It's a masterpiece. So that's my pick for the game of the year. Legends of the Tears of the Kingdom. But Haki, what's your pick? Yeah, so I think Boulder's Gate, you know, kind of gained a lot of hype. But I think Zelda's going to go back to back. I really do think Zelda's going to go back to back. Um, 
you know, I think it's on par with Breath of the Wild. I can't tell you which one's my favorite because I haven't finished Tears of the Kingdom yet. But uh, listen, the new abilities, the mechanics, what you're able to do, you know, in the open world and the immersive gameplay, I really think this one's going to take it. I think the other ones, you know, it's cool they got nominated, but I think it's really going to be between Baldur's Gate and Zelda. Like I said, man, I think Zelda's better go back to the back. Angelica, what's your pick here? You know, if you guys, whoever's been following the channel, maybe you're new. We did a New Year's resolution for video games, and we had to make a prediction on what the game of the year is going to be. And I picked Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So I hope you guys are right, but I unfortunately don't think it's going to happen. I think Baldur's Gate 3 is going to win. I personally think Legend of Zelda should win. I think it's a more, I think Baldur's Gate is a more niche game. Um, it's a more turn-based, the D&D trying to transfer that um, into this game. Um, and I think Legend of Zelda is more for the open market. More people um, probably enjoy playing it. But I think there's a couple issues that hurt Legend of Zelda that we're going to see at the Game Awards. And number one, it's a sequel. Haki made the point. Breath of the Wild won Game of the Year a few years back. And that is going to hurt Tears of the Kingdom because it's hard for critics to probably give that game uh, a sequel to a game that won when a newer a newer game, even though the Baldur's Gate is a sequel, it was made like 20 years ago. So it feels like a new IP, and I feel like they're going to pull in that direction. They're both 96 on Open Critic. They're both 96 on Metacritic with over 150 reviews for both games. So I think people talking about Alan Wake 2 might pull the upset or Spider-Man 2 pull it is a complete BS. This is a two-man race between Baldur's Gate 3 and Legend of Zelda. And I'm, I think, and again, at Baldur's Gate 3, they deserve a lot of praise, but it would hurt. I think Legend of Zelda really does deserve it. Baldur's Gate 3 did a fantastic job, but I do think Baldur's Gate 3 wins it, guys. You know what, though? Like, I'll say one thing in support of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The last of us two did win. Even the last was one did win. So I, I know what you're saying about the sequels. It's a lot harder, but they both did. They both, that, that pulled off and the one sequel thing I'm gonna and say, one. Yeah, one thing I will say, though, Mars, to push back, is Baldur's Gate 3 did something that at the time Breath of the Wild, right? That was a, you know, like a linear game. They made it open world. Baldur's Gate 3 turned a D&D &D formula and made more people play it than ever before, which is similar to what Elden Ring did last year for the From Software world. And that's what I also think they get some brownie points to. I think Baldur's Gate 3 could, I think that's what they're going to lean on. Hey, you might be right, man. Uh, we'll find out this week, but let's jump to the next category. And you know, Marsman Channel, we, Marsman Gaming Channel, we basically cover a lot of indie games out there. Let's talk about the best indie game of the year. And obviously this is a lot more uh, smaller. This is a game that's more independent. Traditional publisher, it's different than the traditional publishers out there. So whatever the hell that means, let's let's dive into that. Only uh, Joff so the, can, uh, the only, can explain. Only, yeah, <laughs> Joff can really tell us what the hell that means. Uh, but the nominations here are Coon, Dave the Diver, Dredge, Sea of Stars, and Viewfinder. And me personally, I'm going to go with Dave the Diver. I feel like the very unique kind of the unique look of the game, as well as the, the comedy that goes with it. And not saying the Sea, I think Sea of Stars is probably the next best option. And I feel like sea, sea of the Stars is obviously very well beloved, has a high rating. Dave the Diver was hyped for a long time from the PC perspective. And then once it gets to the consoles, it just shows that this is that game that people were hyping up. And I feel like the comedy, the many different things to do really give it that wide array of what you're looking for. And it is a social game, like a game that's not, it's approachable. It doesn't seem like too crazy difficult, but there are some natural difficult sections. Um, you know, based on Langella Lange Lange Kill's review, you should go check that out. Um, Dave the Diver obviously had some really great moments, but yeah, I'm going to go with Dave the Diver here. The Jelly Kill, you are uh, the Dave the Diver expert. I sent you on the mission yeah. to go check this game out. What do you think? Now, I know that there's a lot of controversy around this because Dave the Diver technically is not an independent gaming company. They were made by Mint Rocket. Um, I know I called them an indie because, you know, it, there's a lot of debate on what an indie developer is. And I know people are going on their own by Nexon, which is a large company. But Mint Rocket, this is their first game, I believe. And, and a lot of people are saying, well, look, they're owned by a giant company. They have all these resources. This game was made by 29 developers, Dave the Diver. 
And if you look at Sea of Stars, they had 23 developers. So we're not talking like this is some massive corporate that snuck into the Indie Game Awards. This was a small group with, yeah, they had a large company, but no one believed in Dave the Diver. Dave the Diver was out by a small group, and a lot of people try to compare them to Hi-Fi Rush. And Hi-Fi Rush, although it was a very small group, have 70 developers, right? So it's more than double what Dave the Diver had. So there's talk about are they Indie or not. Let's just judge them on what this group of games is. Dave the Diver is the best out of this group. I think Sea of Stars wins it. But personally, I think Dave the Diver should win. And another shocker to me, Mars, is Lies of P not a indie game? I I'm like, I got to go like uh -huh. research again. How did they not get into this list? I love Dave the Diver. I love Sea of Stars, too. I think Dave the Diver is the best. I do think Sea of Stars wins, though. I mean, we're going to have to start counting who's employees. You know, Microsoft, they, they have uh, they have contractual workers. I mean, you, you don't know half those people. Well, they, they should. Workers. I will say this, though, guys. I don't know how you feel. They should do a small development team. They should split this, have an indie developer award and have a small studio award for those groups that have a, those big groups. But that, they, yeah, go make your own game, this little fun game, and it ends up being great. They should be recognized for it. Hey, you, you know what? Not clumped into a indie game game yeah. of the year. Yeah, I mean, hockey. Well, I want to hear your opinion first before I, I give my little uh, uh, last little part. So, hockey, what what game do you pick here? Yeah, so I mean, I, I haven't jumped on the uh, indie train yet. Uh, you know, I've been opening my uh, you know horizon and it's a new game, so I'm definitely gonna hop on. But uh, Mars, as as you said, uh, Angela Kill had made a review, so I'm kind of just basing it off of that. I've you know, watched a few uh, of the other indie games as well. well uh, but I'm going to go with Dave the Diver. It seemed like a very unique game. Um, you know, the, the comedy aspect as well kind of, uh, you know, uh, I guess what you can say gives it brownie points. But I just had a quick question. How about Overcooked? That, that had also come down. Did, was Overcooked? Not this year. That was yeah, a couple of years. That wasn't yeah, a couple of some expansions, but... Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay, because I, I thought that game was pretty cool. But yeah, if that <laughs> wasn't this year, then uh, yeah, my, my uh, pick's going to be Dave the Diver. Yeah, because you know what though, like when you think of, um, you know, you th think of smaller games. I feel like if you you had Hi-Fi Rush in here, I think Hi-Fi Rush would, would win in my category. If this was, if that was the indie game, I know it's it hits that criteria of having a little more than the basic indie. Even like Stray, like I know Stray wasn't some big time developer made them. I know they're like similar to Hi-Fi Rush, like they are supported by a conglomerate, but they at the same time they're not a massive, a massive developer that is making these games. And I feel like. They deserve to kind of be in that like that list of you know smaller devs, but not mass, not indies, right? But yeah. but let's now jump to the last few. We have the most anticipated games. So this is obviously games that have not released yet, games that are expected to release next year, uh, and that we're looking forward to seeing seeing them when they finally release. And the nominees here are Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hades II, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Star Wars Outlaws, and Tekken 8. And when I'm thinking about this. You know, a part of me wanted to say Final Fantasy VII, but I'm a little still butthurt about the fact that they divided this into three separate games. Um, I feel like if this was only part one and part two, then I would be super excited to see how they finalize the rest of this game. And, and obviously it's a remake, so they're keeping the story the same. But the fact that they made this into a, thir a second third makes me want to puke. And so I'm not going to pick that one because I feel like I'm going to have to buy all three games, $70 a piece, Combine them two hundred and ten dollars, and then play the whole thing through to feel like I played the full game, which is embarrassing. Um, but I'm gonna go with Star Wars Outlaws mainly because I am excited to see a Star Wars open world game be successful. But I'm worried about it because how often do Star Wars games at open world are straight up either destroyed or trash? I mean, I, it is going to get me nervous seeing what the game like the trailers and everything, but. Based on what I see so far, I like what I see, but we need to see more before I'm excited. But I'm anticipating this. I, I want it. I want it to be good. I wanted to have a Star Wars game open world that's good like this, because then it really opens the door for a lot more. So, Aki, what game are you most anticipated? For? Yes, I'm going to agree with you. I got Star Wars. Um, listen, the last Star Wars game had a kind of a rough start. Uh, the last three Star Wars movies were pretty rough <laughs> as well, right? So. I'm anticipating this game to be dope, but like you said, man, uh, they really have to hit on, uh, you know, what Star Wars is. And if they can't do that in an open world, it's going to be a big disappointment. Uh, but I think, 
you know, I think with the right story, um, good combat and everything, I think they can definitely do it. But I do also want to mention that Tekken 8 uh, is very important as well. Them, them coming out because of, Street Fart, uh, because of Street Fighter and their success, Tekken 8 definitely has uh, some, uh, you know, things to show us as well. Yeah. Uh, Langelica, which game are you most anticipated for? Um, I think Final Fantasy VII probably is going to be the best of this group. But I agree with you guys. I'm going Star Wars Outlaws because, you know, I feel like that's the the most risky game. I think it could be tremendous or it could be absolute garbage. Um, is this going to be the Boba Fett of Star Wars games or is this going to be Andor uh, of Star Wars games? So I think the concept's very interesting. I am very nervous about its publisher in Ubisoft um, because, you know, they kind of make very generic type games. Um, but boy, a, a really cool Star Wars game is really needed. Um, and I think it, it would be a real big hit. And um, I, to me, it, it's my most anticipated, but has the biggest risk potential as well out of the group. Yeah, the fact that, uh, that Ubisoft is making this thing is like an automatic, like, be wary. Like, yeah. that's like the that's like the automatic warning. Be wary of this game. Uh, but now we're jumping into some new categories. Uh, listen, Game Awards, you know, Joff, if, if you really need some new stuff, they should add ha we have some magic, got magic awards here, and we have some great ideas. So let's jump right into them. The first award is the Scrooge, Mc, uh, Scrooge McDuck Award, which basically is the most game that uses the most greedy practices out there. And this year's nominees, and this is a really tight bunch, we have Destiny 2, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, Diablo 4, and Halo Infinite, specifically for their store prices. And be honest with you guys, the clear winner for me is Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3. This is, this right. takes the cake. This is like a Hall of Fame level of greedy Scrooge McDuck behavior. Like they just dunked on everybody at the same time by making a, a half-assed DLC and charging you $70 for it. And and believe it or not, the, the, the gall they have to say, let's buy the Vault Edition for $100 and not add any new Battle Pass. It's the same one with the same guns and everything else, just new maps and, a, and new, some new look and UI changes and everything else is the same. So you guys earned that award, in my opinion. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is my Scrooge McDuck Award recipient. So Angelica Hill, who is your Scrooge Award winner? Yeah, these are strong candidates in this one. Um, so th there's a lot of winners that you can get. But I also agree. I think it's Call, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And I, I love the foot soldiers that have come out in droves to say, hey, this is the best combat we have seen since blah, 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 Black Ops this or whatever, Infinite Warfare there. But I got to say, like, again, $70 for rehashed maps that do feel good and I, I i we talked about it on the review i actually like some of the combat but to pretend this is a non-dlc is is embarrassing this is a dlc at 70 dollars, and if any other game pulled this off we would be trashing them so again it's guys take off the call of duty fanboy mask and be honest take a step back and think about this for a minute. This is a, again, you could have done a $30 update and I think it would have gotten a lot more praise, but to pretend that this Call of Duty is being unfairly treated, this is a $70 DLC with additional maps, a probably the worst campaign, um, them and Van Vanguard together. I mean, at least Vanguard tried a different concept. At least they tried to invent their own story. This is an a bastardized version of a, of a famous Call of Duty game with slightly <laughs> better multiplayer. Amazing work. And Hockey, what's your pick here? Listen, guys, I got tricked again. Battlefield, $70. Ordered that. Overwatch, $30 to play it two weeks early. <laughs> Screwed on that. Uh, $40, guys, not 30 $40. $40. Excuse me. Add another $10. Um, this is not worth $70. Call of Duty probably takes it for me. I mean, Halo is even worse uh, in, in certain aspects, like charging 20 bucks for a skin or something like that. I'm so against it. Wait till you see the Diablo uh, 4 store. Yeah, I mean, again, like I, I didn't even look at that because I'm so against giving these companies my money after I already gave them money for art, for almost like an NFT, almost like it's digital art that I can show off to my friends. I do not care about that. Like it, I have such a, a burning sensation in my heart that I do not care about paying for digital art uh, for video games. I want to play the game. I want to enjoy the game. Uh, is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 better than Modern Warfare 2? Yes, it is, but that's not really saying a whole lot because Modern Warfare 2 was hot trash. 
So I, I, it's it's this is a tough one because both Halo and COD were really, really bad, but I'm gonna go with COD. Because every time that I play a game too, it like shows me the battle pass that, I, that I'm never gonna buy. I'm never gonna buy it. You know, it shows me, oh, buy this, face pretty colors and everything. Yeah. It's just like, dude, I'm not gonna buy it. And it just makes me really bad. You know, a front runner that was that was left off this list, and I, I just wanna say that they were really close. They had some great work, but Assassin's Creed Mirage showing an ad right in the middle of the game. I mean, that was close. Yeah, that, that it is. almost they got did, them they the bump. Qualify. They got, almost got the bump, bitch. but they just missed. They just missed it. They just missed that. So they were as close, but I, I had I had to keep them off the list here. Next jump, let's let's go to the uh, Sleeping Behind the Wheel Award, which is basically the worst live service or post-launch game out there. And our nominees are Bungie's Destiny 2, EA's Jedi Survivor, Nintendo's Advanced Wars Reboot Camp, Starbreeze's, Starbreeze Studios Payday 3, and I'm going to go with Bungie's Destiny 2. They, they took the cake by not only making roughly what the year of two of the two of the three expansions were hot trash. Now, granted, the Witch Queen was was very good, but the, the, la the next two after were ranked on the top five worst of all the season expansions they made. And on top of that, after they put dunk your head in some crap, they fired the entire community team just to just to start moving on to Marathon. So I'm going to give the cake to Bungie. You guys stole the show. You earned this sleeping behind the wheel word for me. I mean, I, I am impressed. I mean, that is difficult to pull off. Uh, Hockey, what's your award, award winner for this? Oh, man, I'm going to go with Payday 3. Uh, this is a cool game, cool idea. You can play with your friends. Uh, but the bugs and the kind of, um, like, unuseful patches they had brought out in the first couple weeks and, uh, you know, after the game had come out really did not help. Um, it kind of seems like an empty game, you know, an empty game uh, with a lot of bugs. And the only positive for me is that I get to play with, you know, you guys and my brother. And it's kind of sad that uh, my brother, the lawyer guy, this is the first game he's playing, um, you know, when he gets back into gaming. He's playing, a, you know, a half-baked game. Yeah, he so, loves it. He loves yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, listen, because it, it, it is cool. It's a different game, and it's a cool idea, man. You're you're going in to a, to a bank or or a club or something like that with your boys and you're just heisting stuff. So it's a cool idea, uh, but it just came out buggy and the patches just did not really do a whole lot. So listen, it's a live service game. Let's see if they keep adding to it. I'm sure Laura Guy will be on it uh, all the time too, but you know, let's let's see if we can get something in the future. Him, him and the him and the 20 other people playing it still, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Angelica, who's your winner here? Hey, this is another tough one. I, I mean, Bungie, they, they did all they could to try to win this uh, in, in a landslide, but I'm actually going to go with Payday 3 as well. Um, we forget the part where they launched and the servers didn't work, and at times they had to shut down the game for three hours where no one could play while they tried to fix uh, fix their servers post-launch. So this was an absolute disaster at launch. Um, we forget all the, the matchmaking uh, network errors, and we reviewed this game as well. Major issues connecting to games with each other. Once it stopped working, we couldn't get back into it, and it had less content on the launch than Payday 2. So this was just a a, a real disappointing launch and, and post-launch. And now they've added stuff recently, but again, we're judging games, how they come out initially right after. Um, this was a really poor performance, and even though the recent success, I don't think overmatches it. Payday 3 is it for me. I agree, and so now we're moving on to the Valve Award, and this might be a little tough to recognize, but Valve is most known for having gems that they just don't want to release games for. So, for example, I think all the fanboys of Valve are waiting for Half-Life 3 to finally come out, and they will never arrive. It's just like seeing a unicorn, you see a glimpse of a possible trailer, and then it's a VR game, and... You know, you, you don't you're never really going to see it fully released, but I left for dead three and then left for dead gone. three and it's never going to happen again um, unless it was a, a, a billion dollar profit share. That's what they say. So the four nominations here are id Software, who is best no, mo, known for making those Doom Eternal games really lacking here. Naughty Dog with its classic Last of Us series. The coalition with I don't know if you remember the series, but Gears of War that's still out there. And Nintendo for nowhere near in sight the Metroid Prime series ever getting its next installment. And so this was a battle of the of the Titans. I mean, these were all le top tier levels of Valve, Valveness that was happening here. And I, I honestly feel like I need to split the ward in two and give it to two people. 
And I'm going to give one half of the award to Naughty Dog and the other half to the Coalition, mainly because of the fact that around the same time, we have Naughty Dog that came out with the last game, Last of Us Part 2, back in 2020, winning game of the year. And since then, we've had two remakes, no word on yet about the factions multiplayer mode, whether it's coming out or not. We have the TV show and even the official start date of the next season of the TV show. But you know where we're missing? An actual release or even word that they're making the next part of the Last of Us game. And I'm expecting us not to hear about it until the next season comes out for Last of Us Part Season 2. And Gears of War has not been seen since 2019. Marcus Phoenix is lost. He needs some a helper. He needs life alert. Because I don't know where he is and how old he is at this point, but we haven't seen him at all. We've heard more about a Marcus Phoenix collection that's rumored and even a TV show. And apparently Coalition is now just the, you know, the support studio for Microsoft, not actually making games, but helping other games be made like the Perfect Dark series. So congrats to you both. You both earned it. You both deserved it. That's my pick or my picks for this award, the Valve Award. So Hockey, what's your pick for the Valve Award? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Coalition. Uh, you guys were the ones that got me into Gears of War, and I did really love that game. Uh, Gears 5 was very fun, you know, um, but there's really not any info on Gears 6. I think, you know, there's leaks of 2025 or 2026 or right, maybe. something like that. I don't know, maybe. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a game that, um, you know, Xbox players love. You know, it, it's a game that people will buy. Uh, um, and yes, you know, uh, it was successful Gears 5. They're going to be coming out with a TV show. You know, all those things are OK. But what really got you the fans was the video game. So, you know, give me Gears of War 6. Give me something solid about Gears of War 6 and I'll be happy. So Coalition, where you're at. Legella Kill, who's your pick here? Yeah, I mean, this is another tough one, but I am going to go with the Coalition and for a couple reasons to try to drown out the other participants. Nintendo, although we've put them on a couple of different categories here, um, they've had a tremendous year and they did lack for the Metroid Prime stuff, but have made it up in other areas. So I'm going to push them off. As for id Software and Naughty Dog, their last big release was in 2020 with Doom and The Last of Us Part Two. Since then, like Marsman mentioned, we have gotten at least something from them, which have been remakes. It's not what we want, but it's been something that they're doing that we have seen them do. It Software has remade the Quake game. Last of Us has remade some of the uh, Part 1 and Part 2. But the Coalition, we have heard nothing from. Nothing. And they came out a year prior in 2019 was their last main Gears of War 5. I want to hear about Gears of War Tactics, which came out in 2020, a strategy game. Where is Gears of War 6? So where are some of the other IPs? We know we had two projects canceled for them from Microsoft. So the assumption that everyone's saying is Gears of War 6 is now up next but we don't know for sure and mars mentioned about perfect dark we haven't seen anything of perfect dark so coalition I, I all these guys are well deserving of this but the coalition takes the cake as being the haven't heard nothing for a longer period of time yeah and last but not least probably our best award of the night and yeah. i really think that geoff could really pick this one up this is our garbanzo award which is the level of worst game or most disappointing game of the year and this is like the the mount rushmore of worst games i think i've seen in a while we're talking about first or spoken redfall lord of the rings golem quantum era the quantum error uh crime boss rockaway city which oh my god skull island rise of kong and the walking dead destinies and damn this is this is the unbelievable list and it's almost like we were looking at like the year of which which game was worse in a row it started going starting with Forspoken was bad then redfall was horrible then we started to look at like, Golem we'll go, right, after Golem a weeks right after, after. <laughs> and it's just like oh my god like it looks like each of the games like Forspoken and redfall were like damn thank god another game came out because we got we just got the week out of this because of how bad these other games were and I, this is tough because when you look at Forspoken and Redfall, they both have some massive budgets that go behind them, and they were definitely hyped to be very good games. I feel like the next one that was really funded was Crime Boss Rockaway City, yes. but I, I don't think anyone was sitting there thinking that you know, uh, you know, <laughs> that all these actors showing up into a video game with Chuck Norris as as your villain was going to get this game to be successful. I don't think anyone thought that for a moment. I think they all said, this looks like a cringe fest. 
and it damn fit that criteria. The game that gets this award for me is Lord of the Rings Gollum because it is Lord of the Rings and you straight up made a secret hide entire game based stealthy. on hiding and stealthy stealth mechanics With and half the time AI. And, and half the time stealth mechanics are broken and you can literally like the AI are dumb the graphics are horrendous like it just the sound design is off you just hear, start hearing random stuff happen it glitches I literally had to watch Moist Critical had it stuck in a glitch and it restart the game just to progress to the same point like this is broken and it's gross this is the surefire win for me it was a battle between all these others but Gollum takes the cake for my Garbanzo award uh Langella Kill, what's your Garbanzo award yeah I mean Garbanzo award in our category Mars like you meant is the worst game or most disappointing game um these are this is the without good 2023 has been for video high-end games it also has the lowest of low games that we have seen with this group of uh, characters here. Um, to me, Redfall is the most disappointing, but the worst game, my God, I gotta go with the Walking Dead Destinies. I don't know if you guys have seen, they have taken Walking Dead, which has obviously kind of cast it off over time, and they've made a bunch of different shows on now about it, but this has made those characters look awful it is boring and it's trying to combine some of the stealth mechanics uh, with some combat and it is it is absolute trash i mean this is this is the trash of the trash i thought it was between this and lords of the ring golem and i actually think the walking dead if you get a two from ign you are at ign doesn't give twos they don't give twos this is yeah, that hurt an them awful bad. game um and stay away from this as far as possible this should be buried and and never seen the light of day again. So uh, the poor soul from IGN that had to review this game is is unbelievable. Oh my God. Hockey, what is your pick for the Garbanzo Award? I mean, there were a lot of bad games in this category. Uh, the Skull Island game was absolutely trash, dude. Uh, um, the Lord of the Rings game was trash, but personally for me, it's got to be Redfall, dude. This was the worst game in my opinion from the games that i play this is the worst game since battlefield like it like it made me feel as worse uh than battlefield did or almost as worse the only thing that saved it is that i did not spend money on it thank god but the first 30 minutes of the game i was trying my hardest to like it i really was um but as soon as you actually got into the open world and you just saw nothing, you barely saw any vampires or anything like that, it just was just absolutely disappointing. Um, I was hyped for the game. I, you know, like zombie games playing with you guys. I thought this was going to be a cool vampire game, getting really hyped about it. And it was just absolutely terrible. Haven't touched it since. Um, the most disappointing game by far. It, you know what it was? I think it was your New Year's resolution. You said that Redfall would be that game of the year <laughs> contender. I, was so hyped. And, I, was so hyped was, I think that's what got you on that. I was Dude. so hyped. I was like, bro, vampires, <laughs> we're out here, dog. I'm going to be rolling with the squad. It's, a double, it's a double vampire. hurt. That's what it is. Oh. A double See, hurt. I, I, I didn't think this would be game of the year, but I didn't think it would be a, as bad as it was. And I think that's really where it got me. But even with the updates, guys, it still hasn't been fixed. I mean, I yeah, don't know. We're talking remember. release. We're not, yeah, yeah. We're, not, and we're not talking about, because Forspoken and Redfall have gotten better since release, but that's not when we paid for the game. Like, we don't pay for it to fix it a year later. You know, like, that's not how that works. Yeah, but you know what, guys? That is the official Marsman Game of the Year awards. And obviously, if you have any sort of differences or similarities to any of our picks, let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.